So obviously I'm a big fan of Arch Linux. I use Arch-based distributions primarily, at least here in the last few years. And a lot of viewers of the channel complain that this channel is too Arch centric. Hey, can you do some Debian content? Well, you know what my second favorite Linux distribution is? It's actually Debian. So why don't we install Debian today? And in fact, I'm gonna show you my preferred method of installing Debian, and that is by using their mini ISO. They have a little tiny mini ISO. And the reason I like the mini ISO is because it's small, but it also has a lot of choice. You can do an expert installation where you go in and you pick and choose what you want to install, including whether you want to run Debian stable, testing, or unstable. And today, I'm going to run through a quick installation of Debian using the mini ISO, and I'm going to install Debian unstable, codenamed SID. So I'm going to run through this installation using a virtual machine. I gave this virtual machine 6 gigs of RAM. I gave it about 20 gigabytes of space. And I'm going to go, instead of choosing the install option, which is the first option here in the boot menu, I'm going to go into advanced options. And the reason is because I want to install Debian Unstable rather than the standard Debian Edition, which is Debian Stable. So if I go into advanced options and I go into expert install, it launches the traditional Debian Incurses installer. Now, for those of you that are longtime Linux users, you've probably used this Debian Incurses installer in the past. It's very easy to use, but if you're new to it, don't worry, it's pretty self-explanatory. The very first thing you need to do, obviously, is choose a language. So let's go ahead, for me, I'm choosing English in the list. It has correctly chosen English for me already. So I just need to hit enter. Uh, United States English is what I need. And then country to base, default locale, also the US. Now this screen here, don't get confused, it's asking for additional locales other than the one you chose on the previous screen. So I already chose English US for the locale, so I don't need to choose additional locales. If you need to choose them, obviously choose them in this list, but for me, I'm going to hit the uh, tab key to get to the continue button over here. That's how I got continue highlighted in red. And then I just click continue. Next is access software for blind person using a braille display. Display. I don't have any kind of visual disabilities, so I don't need this. So I'm going to skip this and go to configure the keyboard. And for keyboard, American English is the key map for me. It's already there, so I just need to hit enter. Next, detect network hardware. And it's asking about the following Linux kernel modules were detected as matching your hardware. It's already selected USB storage. Uh, let me go ahead and click enter on that. Next up is configuring the network. If I hit enter, do I want to auto configure networking? Usually you want to just hit yes. Please enter the maximum time you would like for network link detection. Uh, by default, it looks like it is set to three seconds. I guess that would be okay. And it's going to go ahead and set up IPv6 auto configuration. It just does all this automatically for you. There's really nothing for you to do. Again, this uh, Debian Incurses installer is pretty self-explanatory. Finally, we need to set up a host name for this machine. I'm going to call this Debian-VM. So if I ever SSH into the machine, I know it's Debian and I know it's a virtual machine, not a physical machine. Let me hit tab to get over to the continue button and hit enter the domain name. I don't necessarily have to enter a domain name, so I'll just skip that part. And then choose the mirror of the Debian archive. So please select the protocol to be used. By default, it will choose HTTP, but if you want to, you can choose HTTPS or FTP as well. I'm gonna go with the default HTTP. Select your mirror country, I'm in the US, so let me click on US, the Debian archive mirror, which one should we use? I'm gonna go with the default, deb.debian.org, the first in the list. Next up, setting up a HTTP proxy. Uh, if you don't need this, you just leave it blank. So I'm just gonna tab over to continue and hit enter. Choose a mirror for the Debian archive. So this is where you choose whether you want the standard Debian stable, which you know 95% of people that install Debian, they probably want to be on Debian stable. But if you want a more rolling release version of Debian, then testing is the way to go. Or if you really want to be on the bleeding edge of things, unstable is a very a bleeding edge rolling release version of Debian. And this is SID. I'm going to go ahead and install Debian SID, which is the unstable branch. Next is download installer components. 
So let me hit enter and we get a very large list of things that we could choose to install. Now being that this is just a virtual machine, I really don't need to install anything extra. I'm not going to keep this virtual machine around, but if I wanted to, I can go in here and install, you know, various packages here. For example, CD-ROM checker, CD-ROM detect, uh, F-disk UDEB, which is uh, manually partition a, a drive using F-disk, ISO scan, the live installer, yada, yada, yada. I'm not going to install any of this extra stuff uh, just to make this install very quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and tab over and hit enter on continue. And it's loading additional components, which of course I didn't check anything off in the list. So this will just be the base components that Debian is going to always install. Next up, set up users and passwords. So if you choose not to allow root to log in, then a user account will be created and given the power to become root using sudo. So do you want to allow login as root? If you choose yes, you'll have a root user and you'll also have your normal user. If you choose no, which is what I'm going to do, then your home user will have sudo privileges. So I'm going to choose no. Next up, let's go ahead and create our user account. I'm going to call my user DT, tab over, hit continue. His username is already chosen as DT, tab over, hit continue. Then let's choose a strong and complicated password for the DT user and then tab over and hit continue and then re-enter the strong and complicated password and then tab over and hit continue. Next up, configuring the clock and set the clock using NTP, that's the default. I'm gonna go with the default NTP server to use. I'm just gonna go with their default, tab over, hit continue. Next, choosing your time zone. I'm in the central time zone in the US, so let me choose that. Detect the disk. Let's go ahead and hit enter, and let's see if it automatically detects the virtual hard drive in this virtual machine, and then partition disk and yeah, it's setting up some stuff here, starting up the partitioner. And do I want to do the guided partition? So the automatic partitioning. I'm just going to let Debian do its thing. So it will create a partition for the main partition and a boot partition if it needs it, whatever it needs to do. Just let Debian do an automatic partitioning or do I want to do manual partitioning? I'm going to do the automatic. So I'm just going to do the guided and it's correctly chosen the virtual hard drive in this virtual machine. There's only one drive, so it really didn't have anything else to choose. And then the partition scheme, you've got a few choices here. You can do all files in one partition, which is what I'm going to do because this virtual machine is kind of tight on space. It makes sense to do everything in just one partition. But if you wanted to, you can separate out the home partition or you can have a separate slash home slash var and slash temp partition. You could also do a separate slash var and slash SRV partition as well, as well as a swap. And you can also do what they call small disk, less than 10 gigabytes of a partitioning scheme. I'm going to choose the first option, all files in one partition, and then we get a summary of what it's about to do to our drive. Everything looks okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And then one more time for confirmation, choose yes, and the reason it asks so many times do you really want to do this is because it's about to format the drive and wipe the disk, right? So you got to make sure that you, know, you really want to install this operating system to this disk. I really do. Next up, install the base system. Let me hit enter on that. And this may take a couple of minutes. And while it was installing the base packages, it does ask which kernel do I want? That's interesting that it gives us various kernel choices. I'm gonna go with the default, uh, which is Linux image AMD64. Next up is drivers to include in the init RD. So do you want to do the generic, which includes all available drivers, so it's going to be much larger in space, or do you want to do targeted, only include drivers needed for the system? Uh, it had generic as the default setting. That's the one I'm going to choose, but if you wanted to just do the targeted, that's an option. Next is configure the package manager. Of course, that's the apt package manager. Do you want to use non-free firmware? The default answer is yes, and unless you have a a real reason to answer no to this question, you probably want to answer this yes, because uh, many machines are not going to run without some non-free firmware. So I'm going to enter yes. Do I want to use non-free software? Now you can choose no to this if you want to, but once again, answering yes is probably the safe play here. And enable source repositories in apt, hit yes, and it's configuring the apt package manager. Next is select and install software. So let's go ahead and choose this. Now it says applying updates on a frequent basis is an important part of keeping the system secure, yada, yada, yada. Do you want updates management on this system? So do you want to do automatic updates 
or do you want to handle that yourself? So by default, it's no automatic updates. You just update the system yourself. And that's actually what I want. But if you wanted to, uh, you could install security updates automatically. I'm going to go no automatic updates, though. And then finally, uh, popularity contest. So this is the PopCon program. Uh, it does some analytics. Uh, it helps the uh, Debian devs uh, know a little bit about your installation. It helps the development of Debian. So do you want to participate in the survey? It's turned off by default, which is a nice touch. But, you know, for me, I don't mind participating in the survey if I was doing this on physical uh, hardware, I would actually answer this question yes. In this VM, it doesn't matter, so I'll click no. And it says, at the moment, only the core of the system is installed, so do you want to install you know, other stuff, like a desktop environment? So I actually do. By default, it's going to install GNOME. Makes sense. It's Debian, right? But for me, I do not want GNOME, so I'm actually going to turn that off. So I'm going to hit the space bar to tag that off. And I'm going to go down to XFCE and turn XFCE on. Now, if this was a server, you may also want to install a web server like Apache or Nginx or SSH. If you plan on SSHing into the machine, it's nice to have the SSH server on the machine as well. For me, I'm going to leave all that stuff ticked off. I'm going to tab over to continue and hit enter. Now, one thing I'm not sure about, XFCE does not come with a uh, display manager out of the box as far as a login manager. So is it going to install one? Is Debian smart enough to know that and install something like LightDM or GDM for me? Or will I have to go after the fact and install a login manager myself? We'll see. Uh, again, I'm not sure on that. Now this portion of the installation has taken a few minutes and I've been paying attention to the uh, package list. It's installing a lot of stuff, a lot of desktop applications. It's installing the full LibreOffice suite. And I did notice it will install LightDM as a login manager. So that answers that question. Next up is installing the Grub bootloader. I'm just gonna hit enter on that. I imagine this is just gonna be an automatic process. I may have to choose what partition to install it to. And it says Grub can use OS Prober to attempt to detect other operating systems on your computer and add them to the list of boot options. So if you're dual booting along other operating systems, you probably want to run this. For me, I don't need to do this, so I'm just going to choose no here. And it just installed Grub. Do you want to install the Grub bootloader to your primary drive? The default answer is yes. I'm going to go with that. Uh, what is the default drive? It's slash dev slash VDA in my case. And on physical hardware, instead of VDA, it'll probably be SDA or NVMe, whatever kind of drive you have. And then finally, finish the installation. Let's go ahead and hit enter on that. Next up, setting up the system clock. Is the system clock set to UTC? The default answer is yes. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes on that. Uh, and it says installation complete. Please choose continue to reboot. So let's reboot and see if our installation was successful. And it looks like our installation was successful because I get a grub menu. So uh, if you don't get a grub menu, that's something bad happened, right? So if you get a grub menu, usually your Linux installation went well. Now the next major test is do I actually get LightDM, the login manager, to appear or are we going to have an issue with our display server here? Eventually, of course, I need to see either a login manager or I need to just be booted directly into XFCE. Uh, I've been on this screen here for a few seconds now, so it's starting to scare me. Yeah, I've been stuck on this screen for a little bit, so let me actually get out of this. Uh, could I switch to a different TTY? It looks like the whole thing is locked up. I can't even switch to a different TTY. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to force this virtual machine off. And let's start it again. And let's see if we get a little bit better luck this time. Maybe it was just an issue with that very first reboot. No, it's going to go to the same screen. Oh, but things start loading. I'm actually getting all the systemd start jobs, so... Yeah, and I get to my login manager. So it was just that first automatic reboot didn't work, but when I manually rebooted the virtual machine, it worked just fine. Let's go ahead and enter our username and our super secure password. And let's see if we get our XFCE desktop environment. Yes, this is very much vanilla XFCE. It's very 
ugly, right? But this is XFCE. Let me open the default terminal in XFCE, of course, the XFCE terminal. And uh, let me go ahead and do a X render command. So X, R, and R. Let's just verify what resolutions I have for the drivers in this virtual machine. I am using the uh, Vert IO video driver in this Vert machine. And you can see 1920 by 1080 is an available resolution. So I'm going to do X render space dash S for set 1920 by 1080. And now I have set the screen resolution to 1920 by 1080. I should be fine on this going forward. Every time I log in, hopefully it should remember XFCE that I want 1920 by 1080. So let's verify that we're actually on Debian Unstable rather than SID. If I open up a terminal, let's go ahead and open the XFCE terminal. I'm going to zoom in. The easiest way to verify if you're on a rolling release is check the kernel version. You name dash R. I am on kernel version 6.12.3. That is a very recent kernel release. That's actually ahead of what I'm on on Arco Linux. I'm using uh, 6.12.1 on Arco Linux, but I haven't updated in a couple of days, so I may have 6.12.3 available for me on Arco if I did an update. But we have, obviously, we're definitely on a rolling release distro here. So this is going to be very different from your grandfather's Debian, right? This is not Debian stable. This is not old, crusty, rock solid stable. There could be some breakage with running Debian unstable. You can see it comes with a full suite of software. I'm not going to go through all the software. But it has the full LibreOffice suite, Firefox. It had a bunch of multimedia stuff, a lot of accessories, all the XFCE utilities, of course, Thunar, the file manager, and all that. You got a couple of terminals installed as well. So you got a nice, good suite of desktop applications. And for me, you know, if I wanted to run a rolling release distribution, and Debian. <laughs> I know that's kind of strange because most people associate Debian with Debian stable. But if you want Debian and you want a little excitement with Debian, maybe use the testing branch or in my case, use the unstable branch. I'm using uh, the unstable branch known as SID. And uh, if you want to do that, the easiest way to install the unstable branch is probably do it the way I just did with the mini ISO because there's no official unstable ISO because it's constantly rolling. They don't put out ISOs for unstable. If you want to install Debian as the unstable branch, you really need to do it with the mini ISO. They do have ISOs for the testing branch now. They do occasionally put out testing ISOs. And of course, they have the stable ISO as well for those that want the traditional kind of LTS, you know, stable version of Debian that so many of us love. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor, Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Archer, Medora, Reality, Tease, Relax, Red, Prophet, Roland, Soul, Astri, Tenrin, Morgen, Twin, Ubuntu, and Willy. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick installation of Debian Unstable would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.